Is there forgiveness after taking the mark of the beast? This is an incredibly important question. <laughs> if we can't be forgiven after taking the mark, this needs to be at the forefront of every Christian's mind. It would be the unforgivable sin. We are going to begin a new series on our website, thegospelintheendtimes.com, called Why is the Rapture Debate Important? And this question must be answered first before we can unpack that topic. So, as with everything we do at the Gospel in the End Times, let's look at what God's Word has to say. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead or his hand, he will also drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. This is quite serious. We are talking about being thrown into hell here. We must get this right. This is one of those absolutely critical doctrines. First, notice the passage says, if anyone. This includes those who have said the sinner's prayer or those that think they're Christians. Anyone includes everyone, even you and me. Next, it says, if this anyone receives the mark of the beast, they're thrown into hell. There doesn't seem to be any wiggle room here. It doesn't say anyone who receives the mark and doesn't repent. It seems like this is an unpardonable sin. But how can that be? Don't we all have the ability to repent right up until the moment of our death? Is the taking of the mark different? Now, many prominent pre-trib pastors believe it isn't. Let's listen to a famous radio and TV pastor, John MacArthur. Now, the question is, if you're living in the tribulation period and you take this mark, in other words, you identify with the beast's empire, will you still be able to be redeemed? And I think the answer to that is yes. Yes. Otherwise, there would be no salvation of anybody in the end of the tribulation. And you've got to have the salvation of folks in the end of the tribulation. You're going to have the Jews redeemed. You're going to have, according to Revelation chapter 7, an innumerable number of Gentiles redeemed. So many, they can't even be counted across the face of the earth. So I don't think the fact that someone takes that is a sentence to, it, to permanency. Any more than you being a part of this world system once in your life means you have to be a part of the system all your life. First, Pastor MacArthur assumes a pre-trip framework and everything that goes with it. He assumes the 144,000 are Jewish evangelists and that they only minister during the Great Tribulation. He assumes the great multitude in Revelation 7 are those who come to faith after the rapture of the church as opposed to being the raptured church who have endured the Great Tribulation. Second, he assumes no one survives without taking the mark. This would be true if the Antichrist rules the whole world. I certainly pray he reads Rapture Case Closed. It was sent to him in September. Because what he's saying is incredibly dangerous for the flock. These people listen to him and trust him. And he is essentially telling them they can take the mark and repent. If he is wrong about this... And it is an unpardonable sin. He has just sentenced a million or more to hell. And John isn't the only preacher spewing forth this teaching. In a way, Pastor MacArthur has assumed there is no such thing as an unpardonable sin. But there is. It's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Could this taking the mark be that blasphemy? Jesus happens to tell us directly. Jesus taught about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but it's in Luke 12 that he explains it. Now, he begins this way. Under these circumstances, after so many thousands of people had gathered together, but they were stepping on one another, he began saying to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Jesus begins by warning about the leaven of the Pharisees, which he says is being a hypocrite. 
someone who fakes their faith in God. In today's world, this is someone who might say the sinner's prayer and think that they're saved and think that that's what saves them. But then Jesus continues. But there is nothing covered up that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Jesus says that the day is coming when your true faith or lack of it will be revealed. He then starts talking about persecution and how that will be the revealer of our faith. Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body and after that have no more they can do. But I will warn you who to fear. Fear the one who after he has killed has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. So Jesus continues. He tells us that a persecution is coming unto death, but we aren't to fear death. Rather, we are to value our eternal salvation. That is what matters. Jesus then gets even more transparent. Everyone who confesses me before men, the Son of Man will confess him before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. Jesus shows that this persecution unto death will be about confessing Jesus or denying him, which is exactly what the persecution of the tribulation will be about, confessing Jesus or denying him. He who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. When they bring you before the assemblies and the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about what you are to speak in your defense or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you are to say. So this is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. It is so misunderstood in our churches. It is the denial of what the Spirit tells us to say in that moment of persecution unto death when we have to confess Jesus or deny him. If we deny him at that moment and blaspheme the Holy Spirit, we have committed the unforgivable sin and will be given the mark of the beast. So pray for John MacArthur, Jimmy DeYoung, and others who hold this opinion. Pray for the flock under their leadership, that they won't be so deceived. Pray that rapture case closed is read. And pray for a national conversation about these topics so that the church can have unity and be one, just as Jesus and the Father are one. That was Jesus' prayer in John 17, 21. That they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you.